So I'm going to be talking about feminism. Hi everyone, I'm Sanjana and I identify as an intersectional feminist. A feminist is someone who believes in the equality of all genders and intersectionality focuses on the fact that feminism can take different shapes and forms for different people because of the differences in the caste or class that they're born in or on their political and social identities. So I know that feminism is the buzzword for a lot of people and it will either make you log right off or it'll make you want to turn your volume a bit higher. So if you belong to the first category, I would ask you to stay put for a while and just see what I have to say. So I know that a lot of people say that we have equality now. So what's the need of feminism, right? Because women have the right to vote. The constitution mandates equal pay for equal work. And on top of that, women have their own cabin in the metro. So what's the big deal? The big deal is patriarchy, which is what the fight of feminism is against. Feminism is not against men. It's against patriarchy, which is the system which often enables men to have greater power than women. And the issue is that patriarchy is so deeply instilled and ingrained within all of us. And often things that are unfair seem normal to us. For instance, it's normal for us to expect a woman to be at home before sunset and it's normal for society to expect a mother to be the primary caretaker of her children. So today I'm going to be telling you a story with, about me and my cycle. And I and, I and my cycle and I have had a lot of experiences, good and bad, but these particular ones kind of led me towards feminism and empowerment. The first, and some context to it. I live in Bangalore, which is one of the biggest cities in India, and it's also considered one of the safest cities in India. I was cycling to a friend's home, and I was on the side of a main road. A main road essentially has a lot of buses and lorries traveling uh, to and fro quite frequently. So as I'm going on my way, a man suddenly just jumps into my path, and Instinctively, I swerve to my right, which causes a lot of commotion behind me with people yelling what, with what roughly translates into if you don't know how to ride, don't be on the road. I can't hear any of that. The only thing that my ears and my brain focuses on is this cackling laughter of the same man behind me. I stop at the side of the road to regain my composure and stabilize my breathing. And I turn around to see the same man, he's leering at me and he's giving me the smuggest smile I have ever seen. Now, I think we can all agree that this man is in the wrong. But the question is, what makes him do that? What makes him derive joy out of this? I think that the answer lies in often how society grooms us. I think there's a binary and often men are taught to crave fear and women are taught to be fearful. This happens in many ways. For instance, we see that the outputs of patriarchy end up turning into the inputs of patriarchy, forming this vicious cycle. When I say this, I mean, for one, when a mother tells her child to dress properly and to stay at home instead of going out, she says that because she fears for the safety of her child and she fears the violence that could be inflicted on the child. And although this happens out of protection, what this leads to is a restriction of women from common spaces. And so similarly, when we look at the media that we consume and the movies we watch, a common storyline that, that exists in all of them is that it teaches men that if you like a girl, you stalk them and you don't take no for an answer. This media that we consume and the protection that arises out of a mother's love for or concern for a daughter's safety are effectively outputs of patriarchy. 
but these themselves turn into inputs of patriarchy which often worsen the situation another time when i was going home i remember this 11 year old child and he cat calls me and i'm astounded so i just stop and i'm just like dude what and the kid scrambles away but i'm left thinking that what makes a 11 year old child cat call someone who is much much older than them and i can think of only two reasons one as i said he learned it from the media he consumes or two he's watched it and probably from someone who, like a neighbor or a brother whom he idolizes and learned it from them another incident was when i was on relatively inside roads and the small girl she turns her head 180 degrees when she sees me cycle and she goes you're a girl and i'm like yes i'm a girl and she was aghast she i could see her eyes light up in amazement because she didn't know that girls could cycle and a lot of this seems ridiculous and insane and i think many of us do feel that way it's it's insane that in 2020 nearing 2021 in fact we all are still fighting for equity and justice but it's a fight that we need to fight otherwise we've already lost and we need to realize that this isn't men versus women and it's definitely not us versus them it's we versus the patriarchy because i'm sure that no woman wants to walk around with pepper spray in one hand and her fingers filled with keys that look like that she can use as daggers to protect herself and i'm sure that men don't want to be feared all the time they don't want their loved ones to fear violence from them and i'm sure a lot of you have experienced this that you're just walking on the road and a woman suddenly starts walking faster and she makes herself smaller and she's doing everything that she can to get away from you simply because you're just a man who's walking the issue is that a lot of things that we do as a result of patriarchy or to protect ourselves from potential violence turns into a vicious cycle for instance our streets would be safer if we had more women on them but we don't have women on the streets because the streets are not safe so i think it's evident that there is a problem now what's the solution because a solution can't be having a separate compartment for women on the metro because that's a band-aid solution that's helpful yes but it's a band-aid to the real gaping wound which is the structural problems that women face so what can the solution be and what can we do well the short answer and the long term answer is that we need structural and systematic change but what can we as individuals do i'm sure that a lot of people in this audience have better answers than me because they're either experts or they have gained more knowledge out of their lived experiences but for my two cents what i would say is first listen talk to people about it and understand where they're coming from a lot of the rate of sexual violence or violence against women is really high it's one in 3 individuals have faced some sort of violence against them and almost every woman i know faces ha- has trauma out of sexual abuse so listen the primary objective is listen to them you don't need to tell them how to react in these situations and you don't need to tell them how to deal with their trauma you just need to listen and try your best to understand now i know this might seem like i'm talking primarily to the men but i'm not i'm talking to everyone we all need to listen because all of us have some amount of privilege right and my world and my realities or my lived experiences are much different than someone who's not as privileged as i am privilege can arise out of so many factors your gender it can arise out of your education the class you live in or a born in rather the caste you're born in the color of your skin there are so many things that influence the amount of privilege we have 
and we can't ever understand the reality of someone else who doesn't have the same privileges but what we can try to do is empathize second we need to call out problematic behavior we know we all know of the boys locker room incident right but that's not a sole incident it's not just in one school this is something that happens in schools in colleges and probably even in workspaces and we need to call out we can't, we need to call out and tell people that sexualizing or objectifying women is wrong we need to tell them that cat calling and howling women tell this to 11 year olds and 50 year olds it's wrong and more importantly we need to tell people that it's okay to unlearn unlearning is a very uncomfortable process but it's something that's essential and it's something that we all need to do we need to educate ourselves right we need to educate ourselves and everyone else about the privileges we have the differences and realities that exist and how we can use the resources that we have to lend a helping hand or to create a platform for people who don't have the same resources we can definitely speak for others but we can't speak over them and we can't take up their space fourth agitate we need to talk about the issues to everyone to your teachers to your students to your local representatives to your politicians talk about it till they realize how messed up the normal is and talk about it until they are uncomfortable with living the normal that's how change will come organize the fifth way is organize use the resources and the privileges you have to create safe spaces and to create organizations that help empower and uplift and lastly hold on to hope it's quite easy to get into the turmoil and turn indifferent or even go into denial but hold on to the hope it's an uphill battle there's no doubt about it but you and i we're all much much stronger than we believe thank you